You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Universalism or not. This is the first of two podcasts which will deal with this topic. This first one will do so from the perspective of the book of Jonah, and the second one will do so from the perspective of Psalm 69. And as you'll see, those two perspectives are almost diametrically opposite. The more I think about this topic, the more I'm reminded of what used to be one of my favourite old hymns when I was a kid, in the days when we sang old hymns. It was written by W. Y. Fullerton, one of the great figures among British Baptists, though he died before I was born. The first verse goes like this. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship should set his love upon the sons of men, or why as shepherd he should seek the wanderers to bring them back, they know not how or when. But this I know, that he was born of Mary, when Bethlehem's manger was his only home, and that he lived at Nazareth and laboured. And so the Saviour, Saviour of the world, is come. And each of the verses begins by recounting some things that the hymn-writer doesn't know, but builds to a crescendo with what he does know. And each line ends with a sort of echoing of that saviour, saviour of the world is come. And that's how I feel about this topic of universalism. There is a load of stuff I do not know, but there is some stuff I do know. In a blog post I dealt with some of the stuff I don't know. Here I want to deal with the stuff I do know, and what I do know really comes down to these two Bible passages. Neither of them all on their own, but both of them typifying an attitude within the Bible. And the first is the book of Jonah. I've dealt with Jonah in a number of podcasts, and if you want to get the background of what I'm saying today, then do listen to some of those eight or nine podcasts I've already done on Jonah. What I want to do here is just really to notice that the book of Jonah is decidedly odd. It's a story among the prophets. It's a story about what appears to be a true prophet who runs away from God. And in this story everything is larger than life, and in this story many things are hilariously funny. The other thing to notice before we start is that this story ends with a punchline, because it ends with a speech by God, and when a book of the Bible ends with God speaking, that has to be the punchline. That has to tell us what the book was about. There is no more authoritative speaker in the Bible than God. So, after all the fun and games in the book, in chapter 4 we have Jonah sitting grumpily outside the city of Nineveh which has been spared by God because it repented. Remember that Nineveh is the wicked centre, the heart of the evil empire in Jonah's day. And God and Jonah have some conversations in the course of which God sends a nice big plant to cover poor Jonah who is hot and bothered and provide him with some nice shade and then overnight God sends a worm to eat up the roots of the plant so that it withers and dies and Jonah in typical Jonah fashion is pissed off enough to say I wish I could die at which point God says you're concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow it came into being in a night and perished in a night and should I not be concerned about Nineveh that great city in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals. It's quite clear from this, as well as from other clues through the whole of the book, that the key message of the book of Jonah is that God cares about all his creatures, even the animals, but especially about the human beings. And God wants to save all human beings. If any human being will repent of the wrong they've done. God is only too willing to spare them, to forgive them. That seems to me not just the message of the book of Jonah, but the message of the whole Bible. And so on this universalism question, that is one of those immovable fixed points that we, we have to stick as a stake in the ground. And so, among all the things that I don't know, on this question. One thing I do know is that God is literally just dying to save us. 
all of us no matter how terrible we might be even the Ninevites 